gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Stoner and the playing of the national anthem. You're willing, will you bow your heads in prayer with me this morning? Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing over this auspicious occasion. We recognize that all perfect gifts are bestowed by your hand, and we give thanks for the recognition of General Drew's potential and future service to this country. We ask that you continue to strengthen him for each new task. Grant him wisdom and foresight as he manages this great command. Fill him with compassion as he continues to lead the HRC team. And may we always place soldiers first. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning, and welcome to today's promotion ceremony in honor of Brigadier General Thomas R. Drew. Hosting today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Douglas M. Gabram, Commanding General of the United States Army Installation Management Command. We are delighted to have several distinguished le leaders and special guests in the audience today. Here with us today are Colonel Lance O'Brien, Commander, Fort Knox Garrison, and Command Sergeant Major William Fogel, Command Sergeant Major, Fort Knox Garrison. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Gabram. Here we go. All right, everybody, loosen up. <laughs> Look around, scan the room here. Okay, let me get my. Let me get my props out. Uh, I would, I was telling Tom earlier, I, I would be kind of in the center of the room, um, winging this a little bit, because I, I really don't have to, because I've known Tom for so long. Uh, but I do have some props, and I want to make sure I don't forget anybody as we talk about some special family members here. So um, just bear with me as I get set. And we also, um, can you hear me in the back? And are we getting out, streaming? We getting, okay. Because we also have some special guests that I want to um, make sure I include. So, first off, you all look really nervous and tight. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know we're spread at six feet here, just for the record, um, so everybody understands. Um, but really, I, I just I want everybody to relax for a second. Um, I promise I'm not going to be too long. Um, but this is very, very special to me. Um, I'm extremely humbled to, to be here and to be asked um, by the Drew family to, to share in this, this really sacred event. Um, so I wanna, I wanna start out, I'm gonna go down the list. Tom's probably gonna do it, um, but, I'm, but I'm also gonna do it. And uh, I wanna mention some really special family members. So um, first off is Tom's lovely bride, um, his spouse, Kay, which we've known for a long time, and Lori um, gives you a remote hug, um, but she gives uh, all of her best. 
um, daughter Kaylee. I, I can't even, it doesn't matter because you, you're, you're much older, but I remember when you were very young and it's, there's, um, we'll talk about some stories here in a sec. And then your beautiful daughter and the granddaughter, Kat, are you still nervous? That's you. Okay. Um, it's really great to have you here. Also, and, and I'm, I, I want to mention these special folks because I know they were all in for the change of command um, a little while ago, last month. And, and I just want to mention them because they are extremely special. Uh, and that's uh, Tom's father, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Joe Drew, uh, his stepmother, Jan Drew, his brother, Todd his sister-in-law, Lynn Taylor, his uncle, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Fred Drew, and nieces and nephews, Kate, Scott, and Tyler. So I hope, I hope the stream is good. I hope you're seeing this. And I just wanna say thank you for everything that you've done um, for the Drew family, because it is a team effort. I also wanna thank some folks that are also up remote, and there's, there's one special guest I wish I could get a, a thumbs up or a check from him, um, but that is a General Retired Dick Cody. And General Retired Dick Cody is kind of like a second father to Tom and I, because if you really want to know where it all started and one of the primary reasons that we're standing here today, it's because of, of General Dick Cody's leadership when it was Lieutenant Drew and Captain Drew, and then all the guidance through, throughout our career. So. Sir, I just want to say thanks to you, and I promise we'll tell the PG-13 version um, today. Um, I also want to um, welcome Brigadier General Babcock. Um, is Hope out there? I didn't see her. Hope yeah, Randy. Special duty. Special, ah, yep. This room really brings back memories for me. Every time I'm in this room, that's why I'm a little nervous, and that's why I'm looking out, and I think you all are, just need to relax just a little bit. Um, but hope, hopefully we'll talk, we'll talk later. Um, I also, I also want to, um, if there's other folks, on, I think there was other folks scheduled a virtual in today, um, some of Tom's friends, and there's other leaders throughout the Army. I, I just want to say thank, thanks for being here, um, and thank you for what you've done. So the family, start, start with the family, and when, when you're old, older, like, like us, like, like me, you realize um, you got here not because of what you did, it's the support of the family. Because truly, um, there's no way we do what we do um, without the support. And General Odierno had a great quote years ago, and I've, I've hung on to it. And I think it summarizes um, the importance of our families. And it goes like this, the strength of our nation is our army, some of you are nodding your heads, you've heard this. The strength of our army is our soldiers, but the strength of our soldiers is our families. So I, I, that is what defines Tom Drew's family. So I, again, I, Tom, I just wanna thank you and, your, and the Drew team for all the support and the service and the sacrifice that you've given to our army um, over many, many years. So the army, as you know, is about people. Uh, it's not a slogan. It really is. And when you look back on a career, when you reflect, um, you understand. And I know it's our number one priority is, is people, but it's always been that way. It's always been that way, and it, and it always will be that way. So how special is it, and I'll get to this as, as I read from the Bibles here in a second, um, that Tom Drew will command Human Resource Command. I can't think of a better leader of character and commitment, and I'll go on and on here in a minute, um, to do that job. We've realized that the most effective weapon really to deploy against any adversary, no matter how great the technology is, is an effective <coughs> leader and leader development what we do. So as you all know, many of many, you may not know, um, for about the last year, Tom has been the leader of the Army, posted at the intersection 
of these two huge aspects of our Army, taking care of our people and identifying leaders to develop them. First is the military deputy of the Army's Talent Management Task Force, and then is the director. So Tom, Tom's chartered the Army's course through extraordinary times. So that's over just the past couple years. But what a lot of you don't know, and if I hope you had a chance to look at Tom's bio, it's like about 10 pages, but it's really incredible because it's not like any other. What's not on there, you'll see he was commissioned in 1989, so just by Ohio math, that's a 32 years, but what you don't see is his enlisted in his warrant officer time. So you can add that up, and I think we're over, I don't know, 50 or so. No, bad math, but it's a long time. So whether, whether you're talking about one of his 13 combat tours, earning multiple air medals with the device, that's Valor, and a distinguished flying cross, or as the DCG, the Deputy Commanding General of SOCOM, or here at the Talent Management Task Force, what an incredible career. Tom is in your, quote, ordinary officer. This journey for, for us, and the reason I'm honored to stand here, it started in 1989. That's 32 years ago. And again, it was Lieutenant Drew and Captain Gabriel. And it all started, he was my platoon leader in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. There's maybe, there's a couple pictures, and I just, again, we're gonna use props here. Tom has his picture. I know it might be a little hard to see, but he he gave this to me, and that's a that's a Tom Drew with hair. <laughs> Look at that. And that's a Doug Abram with Ray Bands with a mustache. <laughs> and it, it wasn't Tom Cruise. It was not Top Gun. And our company, our company uh, call sign was the Bearcats. And we were part of the No Mercy Battalion. And this still this still hangs on my wall. Um, we'll talk afterwards. I'm going to give it to Tom. Tom's got a similar picture, but when we were talking about this earlier, he goes, hey, sir, <laughs> yeah, I, I took this. It was my camera because I was the only guy with a camera then, and it didn't look like the things that we carry around, right? So our, Lori and I were talking about this. That's my spouse, and um, she goes, well, that's, that's five stars. Look at those guys back in 1990, and now there's these two characters and it's pretty bad though when your aide walks up in your office and he looks at a picture in your office and he said who the hell's that guy <laughs> um, so five stars Tom this five is to you um, not, not, not a bad deal so as we as we um, progress throughout Tom's career there's, there's one other you may not know this uh, but we did uh, we did a little operation called Task Force Normandy, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Desert Storm started on 17 January at what time, Tom? Zero. 0238. 0238. Tom Drew fired one of the first missiles to start Desert Storm. Don't know that? Probably didn't know that, did you? Eight Apaches flew a couple hundred miles. I don't want General Cody, I can feel him. He's going to probably interdict here and tell the story. But Suffice to say, and, and General Cody was on that mission too, but Lieutenant Drew led his team and he put steel on target and destroyed several radar sites to open the corridor for all the fixed wing armada to come in and knock out all the radar sites, not all the radar sites, but key radar sites to start Desert Storm. Who knew that? Anybody know that out there in the audience? That's your commander. Okay, cool. so that was the first of hundreds of combat missions. This happened in 1991, 17 January at 0238. But after that, if you look at his bio and you read and you look at the commands that he had, not only in the 160th, but he commanded the great 101st Aviation Brigade in combat. Hundreds and hundreds of combat missions, 13 tours. After that, did y'all know that? 
Okay. Um, so the multiple stories and the effects and the impacts that Tom Drew had in combat on soldiers and families, there's there's probably no other in our army. There's no there's very few general officers, senior enlisted, that have the time, the tours, the impact that Tom Drew had. Do you think about that? That that is really that's a fact. Um, and many of those stories will obviously won't be told today or maybe tomorrow or the next day, but they'll have that for the rest of their lives. And when they talk to their sons and daughters about what right looks like, they'll talk about Tom Drew. You know, just matter of fact, just let's free cop and go back to Desert Storm just for a second. We were privileged to have a um, battalion reunion, a Desert Storm reunion, 31 years. And who do you think put that together? He's a little busy, but he and Kay and General Cody put together a reunion. We all went back to Fort Campbell and we talked about the old times and we brought everybody back together. That's important. I would recommend you do the same. Go back to the past, reflect, think about the people that you serve with. But he did that on his own and his own dime. Um, so that's the kind of commander that you all get to have here at Human Resources. So there's there's two books um, I call them the Bibles that I that I, I brought here. One one is Once an Eagle. Hopefully. Most of you have read that, and if you haven't, you need to. That's a homework assignment. And the next is called American Generalship. And I'd like to, once an eagle, it's pretty thick, right? Check that out. It's, this, and this is the paperback version. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's many quotes, and I've, I've read this book multiple times, and I've, I've reflected on what can I say about Tom Drew I think you're going to understand here in a second. So there's a, there's a, in the beginning of the book, um, there's a passage, and there's two characters in this book. Sam Damon, right? Thumbs up, who's read this? Sam Damon and Courtney Massengale. You do not want to be Courtney Massengale, but you want to be Sam Damon. So here, excuse me for the glasses, but it's just the way it is at this point. <laughs> So General Sam Damon has much to say to us today and into the next century. But what he said to his son during a period of great stress applies to most of us most of the time and describes in one sentence what an officer should be. He says, you can't help what you were born and you may not have much to say about where you die, but you can and you should try to pass the days in between as a good man. Once an Eagle is both a perspective study of the profession of arms and a chilling overview of armed conflict, which he knows a little bit about. Sam Damon carried men forward by the force of his own will. Young Americans who can emulate Sam Damon will be required if this nation is to remain free and at peace. So, as most of you know, when we talk about general officers and how, how things work. We had discussions about people. And when I was younger and we were discussing Tom Drew, um, there was a, we were talking to several other general officers and a classmate of Tom's, I don't know if he's listening today, but Lieutenant General retired Kevin Mangum said to me, Tom's name came up. And he said, Tom Drew is the Sam Damon of Army Aviation and our Army. Drop the mic. And if you know, and if you've read this book, you know who Sam Damon is, that's all that needs to be said. And I've taken that, and I've, I've used that line in another forum about Tom Drew. So this is the first reading for, for Sam Damon. The second is a book called American Generalship, and we, we talk a lot 
All right? We talk a lot about leadership. What is leadership? What, what, what are the qualities and traits? What does it take to be a good leader? Much has been written, right? Volumes have been written on leadership. And this, this was given to me years ago, this book. Um, and I, again, re try to reflect and think about today and, and Tom mm -hmm. Drew. And at the end of the day, it says it on the front for the Cliff Notes version, character is everything. Character. And it says in chapter one, selflessness, says, Excuse me. There are many qualities that combine to make a leader successful. Among the most important are professional knowledge, decision, humanity, equity, courage, consideration, delegation, loyalty, selflessness, and what? Character. From all my research, however, it is clear that there is absolutely nothing as important in successful leadership as character. Many great generals, such as George Washington, Robert E. Lee, George Marshall, are remembered not only as great leaders, but as men whose character predominated. Again, I, I, I say to you, Tom, Tom Drew is the definition of character. And for those, Tom's been here 30 days, and for those of you getting to know him in this command, I'm here to tell you that that quality is what makes him great. So, to, to, that's why I'm on the podium. So I wanted to read those two passages. I thought I think they're important. Um, and if you haven't seen these books, I, high, I highly recommend them. So, we're really we're we're promoting an American hero today. And I hope, even though we have a small audience here, there's a there's folks. On the, on the virtual side. And we wanted to do this, frankly, a month ago. And Tom didn't really want to do this. Kay knows that. Because that's how humble he is. But this is something we, we must do, and we must do it right. And frankly, there's not going to be another Tom Drew. Okay? So you need to, you all need to be Really, uh, when, you, when you think about today, when you think about the leadership that you're all about to gain, you need to understand how, how lucky you are, okay? So, um, I'm extremely, extremely proud to be here today. Um, a lot of emotion, that, not only with me, but there's a, there's a bunch of people um, kind of in the background that, that wanted to be here, that couldn't be here. I'm getting texts like, you know, last night and the day before, and a um, couple couple of our old friends are like, "Hey, sir, you got to carry the message. You got you got to do it right." Um, I said, "Man, that's a big that, that's a big task. I'll, I'll give it my best um, because we all know we the folks that have served with Tom and they've known him. We we all know the deal, but all of you out there that haven't served." with Major General Tom Drew. You're pretty lucky, you really are. So you need to learn every day. You need to ask and learn and watch and listen because you will see character. And you will see the Army values, what they, how, how people should live them. So I, I just, I think, I think you're all really lucky to be in this leadership factory here in HRC and have Tom leading you. So, with, with that, we're gonna, the old, the old guy's gonna stop talking, and we're gonna bring Tom up here front and center. We're gonna execute the promotion, and Tom's family is gonna do that. I'm gonna step off to the rear. I think we're gonna do an oath of office here. <clears throat> and the oath, the oath is, um, I'm gonna pull out my card. Um, I was telling Tom earlier, I, I really do know the oath, but here's what happened in full transparency. You see, it's a pilot thing. We, we do checklists, and about three or four years ago, I'm up there with the oath, and I jacked up like four words. And I kind of I got through it, 
many people probably didn't notice, but then I got AAR'd after that. And you don't skip a word, and every word has a meaning in the oath. So I said to myself, uh, whatever happens after this, I'm, I'm going to pull my card out, and I'm going to make sure, just like the poor takeoff check before landing, and weapons check, and don't sleep at that, I'm going to use the checklist. So I just want to pre-warn you, that, that's, that's how we're going to roll, and that's my reasoning. So um, I'll hand it back to the great narrator. I'll clear my stuff here. during the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Thomas R. Drew. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted to the rank of Major General. By order of the Secretary of the Army, signed Adam D. Smith, Colonel, General Staff, Chief General Officer Management Office. And, and we did a modified rehearsal, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> ceremonies, it is customary for the newly promoted officers to reaffirm their oath of office. At this time, Lieutenant General Gabram will administer the oath of office. I state your full name. I, Thomas Ray Drew. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States. In the grade of Major General. In the grade of Major General. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution. That I will support and defend the Constitution. Of the United States of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign against, and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. That I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. By which I am about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, sir. Major General Drew with his promotion so certificate on behalf yep, yep. of the Secretary of the Army and General Officer Management Office. So we're just going to hold this thing yeah. and let's do this. There we go. Oh my goodness. Yep. See that? <laughs> and scene. All right. <laughs> there we go. All right, we have one more, more little trick here. Major uh, General Drew will now unravel his two-star flag with his wife, Kate, that? daughter, Kaylee, and granddaughter, Kat. Yeah, Kat. They're going to pull the flag. We're going to pull this thing out. I need you to unfurl it, okay? All okay. righty. Okay. Here we go. Can you pull that right here, Kat? Pull it. Pull it off there. There you go. All right. Now, we're going to 
unroll this. See, that's my new flag. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce you to Major General Thomas R. Drew. Yeah, I'm going to try to stay here. If uh, and we got the sound, we're still good. All right. Um, first off, thanks to everybody that's out there in the virtual world uh, and that came here today. And I know COVID limits how we're sitting here and all the rest of that stuff. But I do have a, a few people to thank here. Uh, for being here and then being part of my career. Um, if, if you know me, you know that this thing, uh, being promoted is not a big thing to me. You know, my job didn't change. My mission from the chief didn't change. Uh, it's just my rank. Uh, but the reason this is important is because it gives me an opportunity to thank those who put me here. Because I didn't get, just like General Gabriel said, I didn't get here by myself. A lot of people helped me along the way, and, I, and I'd like to recognize uh, them. First off, I know we already mentioned General Cody, but you know, as, as, you, as you're a young officer, a young soldier, you know, your first initial leaders, if they're really good and you emulate that, you will do very well. And we had, you know, the, the John Wayne of Army Aviation as our battalion commander, uh, and we went off to war, you know, and that was a tough environment. You know, 140 degrees on the ramp, the skin of the aircraft so hot you couldn't touch it without your gloves on. And yet, we did it every day, every night uh, during that whole tour because of his leadership, his servant leadership. Um, he showed us how to do it, and he, and he did it every day. So it was really easy for, for folks like uh, me and my folks to get out there and do the same thing. If the old man can do it, we can do it too. Uh, and right there during that time was General Gabriel. I've known General Gabriel since he was a lieutenant. I was a warrant officer. Uh, and, and even back then at Fort Hood, there was something special. His, he's very charismatic. He has a great way of, of dealing individually with everybody. Uh, it's not one size fits all, because we had a cast of characters in Desert Storm, but we all lived in a garage. We lived in tents. We lived in the sand with no tents. Uh, and uh, he was the reason that that company stayed together stayed mission focused, sleeping on the top of a, of a hut on the Kuwaiti border uh, with dead sheep everywhere that had died of anthrax uh, with a Prick 77 ready to go north. Now, go do that for, for a week without a break. Um, you know, that, that takes some leadership uh, and, uh, and it was all him. Uh, even though I was a platoon leader, he was there with us and he was the one giving, giving orders. Uh, but your example, sir, you and Lori, uh, your sacrifice for the country um, you know, people just don't understand. I know I've, I've said it to some of you before. It's hard for people who aren't in the military or a military family to understand sacrifice. People think they sacrifice. They have no idea. Especially if you have a family. And you look at how many combat stripes General Gabriel has. You know, for those of you who don't understand that works, that's six months in combat for every stripe on your sleeve. So he's got a son and daughter that have grown up with him deploying. Uh, Think about all the birthdays, the Christmases, all those things that you miss in a child's life. And Lori, God love her, and she's just a wonderful uh, woman, uh, nurse, and mother. She made it all probably great for the kids. But you know, in the back of their mind, and as we're deployed, you know, you really miss those things. And then some days it comes back. Uh, you know, sometimes <clears throat> when when I talk to my daughter, you know, like yeah, you weren't there for that. You know, and it just breaks your heart. Uh, but that sacrifice for you and Lori and, and the kids, um, I think most people don't understand how, how hard that is and what a sacrifice it really is. The other guys that, uh, that I'd like to thank, and I've got, I've got a little list that I'm going to go down, but, but I want to I thank uh, General Bo Dent, the USASOC CG. He's changing out here next week. Um, not, just the, not just General Bo Dent, but the whole team there uh, put me, and one of the people that put me right here today. Uh, his, his example, uh, his mentorship, him telling me how to do this and that and which way I needed to go, uh, he's always spot on. Uh, the team, whether it was uh, Brad Moses, Gil Ferguson, all the team out there, um, I'm better at this job because of the, the attention that all of you gave to me and, uh, and coached me uh, in how to do this right. 
I'd also like to, to thank some uh, senior NCOs. Um, and I, I don't know if uh, Esteban Sotorizado is out there uh, online, uh, but, uh, but you are the example of what a, a CSM should be in our Army. If they want to know what right looks like, Esteban is that person. And I was fortunate enough to have a few others, Joe Edmondson uh, and Mike Hoover, and, and one of my, it was uh, two of my CSMs, and from them, you know, I learned, you know, how to, in, a, in, a, in an ambiguous situation, pick a direction and go all in uh, and be decisive. Uh, and uh, both of those guys, I've worked for in a heartbeat, uh, just world class. And the last senior NCO, well, not the last one, but one of, another phenomenal uh, CSM that taught me things that put me on this, uh, on this stage today is uh, Command Sergeant Major Stu O. Black. He was my Brigade Sergeant Major. Uh, for about uh, almost three years uh, because of our nine-month tour in Afghanistan. But in Afghanistan, he was always in the right place, the right prime. When I was getting ready to mess something up, he's like, hey, sir, recommend you, you, you fly that Chinook down to Shank and spend a little time with him. He was always ahead of any problem uh, and just a phenomenal man and, uh, and just an outstanding NCO. So like General Cabram said, you know, one of those things in the generalship thing is you, you have to know your profession. Whatever it is you do, uh, you've got to know it, and I've got some people to thank, because had I not been a good pilot, I would not be here. Uh, so i got got some folks to thank here. So Greg Gilman, Turbo, uh, Greg Turberville, and all that, and Jamie Weeks, God rest his soul, all of those guys, you know, when back in the day when Apaches were brand new in the Army, uh, we had this standard of professional excellence. We would have, if we didn't do Bible study, but Dash 10 study, um, you know, to make sure that we knew everything about it. We practiced hard every second that aircraft was in the air. They taught me to do your best to get better at that thing, whatever that is, every time. And uh, so that's how I developed my professional, uh, you know, aviation ability to, to be a pilot. Also in the 160th, Casey Ragsdale, Frank Hazelton, and Troy Wagner, um, another great set of pilots uh, that showed me in special ops, you know, hey, what it takes to be there and when you are perfect. Um, and uh, so I, I'd like to thank them for all their thing. And then there's one senior NCO. He was an E-5 back then. He is now the uh, branch CSM of Aviation Branch at Fort Rucker, Jimmy, Jimmy D. Wilson. Um, he was with me, him and Red Hubbard, on some, uh, some extremely arduous missions. Uh, not always hazardous, but, but arduous missions during the invasion of Iraq in 03. I mean, imagine, you know, taking off, lifting off, and not touching the ground for 10 hours in the middle of the night. Uh, it, it, was, it was a challenge. And uh, Jimmy and Red, uh, I have you to thank for my life um, and for keeping all uh, the team together over there in Iraq during the invasion. And one final one. So one of our teammates here at HRC, and he's, he's uh, kind of taking a break right now in teleworking, but uh, you probably wouldn't know it if you ever met him, but uh, Command Sergeant Major Mike Telesco uh, was diagnosed with cancer. He went through chemo, he went through radiation. His last little bout of radiation, which ended last week, kind of tore him up pretty good, uh, and he's recovering from that, but he's done with all that. And you probably wouldn't know that he had cancer because he was here every day with a smile on his face, out there, and it's as if nothing changed. Uh, and Mike and I were, uh, were in special ops together uh, overseas in Iraq. You, you pick the, the crazy place. And everywhere he was, he had such a positive attitude, even when it was hard. Aircraft shot down. We got people out there. They're under fire. Mike and his ability to get the team. He knows what we got to do. Get them all together. Pump them up. Let's go out there and kick their ass. Let's go out there and recover our, our, our aircraft and our people. And that's him. Um, so uh, just a phenomenal uh, NCO and an inspiration for me personally. Now to my family. So, you know, why am I in the Army today? Well, they got two people that kind of gave me the example, and it was my father and my uncle. My dad was an armor officer, which is why I grew up here at Fort Knox, uh, but he was also a pilot. And when I was young, he came back from Vietnam the first time, and, and, and I was three years old, and you see, and I can remember, believe it or not, when I was three, and seeing him fly in Hueys and all these aircraft, it's like, that's what I want to do. He goes back to Vietnam as an aviation major, uh, that back then, that's when you were a company commander. Commanded a company over there, and it's the coolest thing that I'd ever seen. And, and, and for those, well, General Gabram's old enough to remember. But if you'd watch Walter Conkright, uh, Cronkite on, on the news, just about every clip video that they had of uh, Vietnam back then was a bunch of Hueys coming in to do, to do a combat assault. 
you know, I knew my dad was out there doing that. Sorry. And I wanted to be just like him. So, Dad, thanks. My Uncle Fred, Bass Freddy. Some of you met him at the, uh, at the Change Command. He is, probably has the, 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 the best life of anybody I've ever met. Why is it, is it good for, for Fast Freddy? Because he makes it that way. His uh, outlook on life uh, kind of guides everybody uh, around him, and he's just so happy to be alive. If you are a young second lieutenant in the Battle of Way in January of 1968, and, and the odds are really stacked against you, and you live through it, you kind of celebrate every other day after that. And Fred has, uh, has done that. Um, now, to these girls, we're going to be brief because you can see just talking about other stuff too. Be but thank you, and I love you. And uh, who's my favorite person in the world? Is she in here? Yeah, that's Kat. All right. So uh, again, thanks everybody. Uh, this ceremony, again, the reason why I I thought it was important because I wanted to thank people that helped me get here. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate everybody attending, but especially General Gaber, um, lifelong friend, commander, Bearcat 6, Bearcat 1-6, now a major general, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army song. Congratulating the Drew family. That's it. That's it.